Good morning. Today is Christmas morning. This is uh, December 25th, 2016. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. We're located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Spring Springfield. Uh, the telephone number is Good morning. Good morning and Merry Christmas to everyone. Our service is entirely in our bulletin this morning, except for we come to the Nicene Creed. That will be the only time you'll need to take your hymnal out and turn to page 104 for the Nicene Creed. But everything else is in the bulletin that you were given. One other exception, uh, the prayer of the day in your bulletin is different than the prayer today in your insert we will use the prayer that's printed in this worship list. so now I invite those who came without difficulty to stand as we begin our celebration of the birth of our lord with joy to the world
Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited and is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be his father, and he will be my son? And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And, in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up. And like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and the darkness did not overcome him. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. You may be seen. A couple of announcements to share with you first of all, and that is that the sign-up sheets for January through March for reader and communion system and so forth are on the front pew if you have not signed up for either 8 or 10 or 30 service. Also, um, if anyone would like to help deliver pointers to shut-ins after our service today, you're asked to see Connie, who just read, so please see her. Uh, the flyers on the altar today are from Linda Fox in honor of family birthdays. And I've been asked to remind you to pick up your offering envelopes that are downstairs on the cart. And the last one is to remind you that next week, being New Year's Day, there also will only be one service at 10 o'clock. So next week will be like today, just one 10 o'clock service, no Sunday school, um, just the 10 o'clock service <coughs> celebrates the new year which actually is the festival of the naming of Jesus. So grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we gather this morning on this Christmas day, some of you may have been somewhat confused by the reading of our gospel lesson. You may have come this morning expecting either to hear Matthew's version of Jesus' birth that actually we read on the fourth Sunday in Advent, or maybe you thought we would reread the famous Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, which was read last night. As we read the Gospel of John this morning on first reading or first look, it is easy to see where one would be confused as to what does this have to do with Christmas. <coughs> but it has everything to do with Christmas. You see, Luke and Matthew give us the human events that happen. They give us a description of what people saw and experienced that first Christmas. The birth of Jesus, the birth of the Son of God, the birth of the Savior, of the world and how he was visited by shepherds and then later on by these strangers from the east that we identify as magi or the wise men. They were dealing with the humanity of Jesus. In our gospel lesson for this morning, which is the typical gospel reading for Christmas Day from the early days of the church, we have St. John giving us the divinity of Jesus. John is not interested in portraying the birth as recorded by Matthew and Luke because they have done it. He is interested in the theology of what this all meant. What was this all about? Who is this child? What child is this that has come into the world? And so he begins by explaining to us that first of all, this child is the eternal creator. As he says in verse 3, all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. That word made means to cause to be. So he's telling us that this baby born in Bethlehem was there at the beginning of creation, and nothing came into being without him there. This takes us back to Genesis, to the creation story. And we especially remember those words, that verse when it's, God says, let us make man in our own image. That us is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That us is the Word. 
God's power of creation. So Jesus is the creator. He is truly God. He is responsible for what this earth in which we live. And this is why he was able to perform the miracles that he performed, because everything he calls to be. So this isn't just a normal baby. All kinds of babies all over the world were born at the same time of Jesus. But none of them were God in human flesh. None of them were conceived by a virgin being impregnated by the Holy Spirit. All the other babies born that night came about by the natural way that we all came in. And so John is emphasizing the fact that that baby was indeed special just as Matthew and Luke tell us that he was very special as the angels proclaimed to the shepherds because he is the true God. Next he tells us that this baby is the one who gives light and life into the world. In him was life, verse 4, in him was life and light. The light was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So the word shine means to appear. Uh, the word darkness literally means here not a darkened room, or not the darkness of nighttime. But this means literally unhappiness and obscurity. And then to overcome it means to overpower something, to overtake it, uh, to bring it to understanding. So when St. John is telling us Jesus is the light who gives us a light, he is reminding us of that before Jesus came, we were in the dark due to sin. After our first parents sinned, we were kicked out of the garden. Uh, before God chose the Hebrew children to be his chosen nation to bring the, the light to the nations, people were confused about God and their relationship to God, and all kinds of beliefs sprung up. And it wasn't until the covenant made at Mount Sinai that the Hebrew people then were given that charge to show the world what God, who God really was and how God really cared about us and how God really felt about us. But as you've heard me say before, and you've heard other preachers throughout your lives say, that unfortunately the Hebrew children forgot what that true charge was when God chose them as his people. Their charge was not to become self-centered. The charge was not that they were to become conceited. The charge was not that they were the only people that God loved, but that he had chosen them to share with the rest of the world who God was. But they stopped doing it. And they looked at it as meaning they were the only ones God cared about. They took the attitude that Gentiles were not worth trying to reach. And so God then had to act more radically. And that is by sending his son into the world to be the life and light of the world. To reveal then, or to appear as the true revelation of God. So that we would see that God was not this horrible judge just waiting to knock us down at any chance he had. But that God loved us so much that he was willing to come to earth taking on human flesh and to live as we live, to experience what we experience, to suffer worse than we'll ever suffer and to die the most horrible death or one of the most horrible deaths that humanity has ever created in the death by crucifixion. This was now then the new people the new chosen would be those who believed in the message of Jesus. And they would then share it with others. But unfortunately, down through the ages, and especially it seems like in Northern Europe, Western.
Western Europe and America, that we have sometimes fallen into this trap of thinking that as Christians, we are all that God cares about, and therefore we don't really need to do anything. And one of the biggest problems with the church in America today, especially among mainline Christianity, is a lack of evangelistic fervor. Unlike our fundamentalist brothers and sisters, we do not have that passion to go out to the unsaved, to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with those who are not part of the community of faith. We have a tendency to say, and I've repeated this story too many times, to be like a woman in the congregation I served in Kentucky when talking about evangelism and reaching out to the community to bring more people in to a local church, her response was, the time's gone now. Sign outside. The newspaper has a little ad what time church services are. If people want to come, they can just walk in the door. But how many times do we see Jesus and how many times do we see the apostles going out to the unchurch and inviting them to come in and not sitting back and waiting for the unchurch to come to them and then to share with them the good news? This is why Jesus gave us the Great Commission. He said, go out into all the world. He didn't say sit back and let the world come to you. He said, go out into all the world. Go out to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. See, those are our marching orders. The people today still need to know that Jesus is the life and the light. That he reveals to us, that he discloses to us, that God is truly our loving Father who wants us to be in his kingdom. Not a judge who wants to send us to hell. That Jesus is indeed the good shepherd who seeks us out. That Jesus is indeed standing at the door of our heart, knocking, seeking to be let in. That Jesus is indeed the Savior who wishes for all people to come into salvation. And so John is emphasizing to us through this theological termination uh, that, or theological terminology, that the baby in Bethlehem was indeed the light the world needed. The light that illuminated our sin, that cast us out of that darkness of sin into the new light of faith that revealed to us who God really is. And so that brings us then to the third point that he is making. And that is, Jesus is the divine Savior of the world. Beginning with verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who are born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Now, there, that sentence emphasizes that salvation is all the work of God. That we became the children of God, not back because of the blood of which we were born, the family we were born, not because our parents willed for us to be born, not because it's part of nature to be born, but we were made children of God by God through the sending of the Savior. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word became flesh. The Word became means to a completed action or something that was formed. The word flesh means whole person. That's important. That we understand that Jesus was a whole person. But he also was devout. But he had flesh. John constantly uses this word flesh. We're more familiar with it 
in John 6, when Jesus talks about being the bread of life, and he talks about you must eat of his flesh uh, in order to have everlasting life. Uh, there are those scholars who believe that actually what John has done there in that conversation or has, is taken the actual words of institution that Jesus said the night of his betrayal during the Lord, during the meal that becoming became our Lord's Supper. Because in Jewish thought, they only had the word flesh. They didn't have the word body, meaning our entire body. That was Greek thought. And of course, that's Matthew, Luke, and Mark were translated in Greek, so they used the Greek word. But in the Aramaic that Jesus would have spoken, he would have said flesh. Because that's the way Jewish thought was. And so, John is telling us, the word was formed into flesh, a whole person, and dwelt among us. That word dwell is a word we hear often, see often in the New Testament, St. Peter and St. Paul use it in their epistles. It means to tent with someone, to dwell with them, to encamp with them, to reside with them, to occupy the same place that they are. And so it's this idea that God came down in the form of Jesus and set up his tent to be among us. That he became part of the community, setting up his residence so that he could be, indeed be, our Savior by experiencing all that we've experienced. If you enjoy reading Greek and Roman mythology, you will notice that the gods and goddesses of Rome never take on human flesh. They never tent with us. They hop down from Mount Olympus, spend a few hours of mischief, and then hop right on top of Mount Olympus where they're safe. But here we see God taking on human flesh, setting up his temples, setting up his Residents and camping with us, residing with us, occupying with us this world so that he would be able to identify with us completely. And one point that's often not emphasized enough is that he was even tempted as we were tempted. But he was over, able to overcome that temptation. Just think about Jesus, the night of his betrayal, the Garden of Gethsemane. Think about him praying in that garden to his Heavenly Father. And he knows what's coming. He knows what's going to happen. He knows the horrible death he's facing. Satan comes along tempted to try to disobey his Father's will. But Jesus instead remains firm. And he pours out his soul to his Heavenly Father and asks his Heavenly Father, if it is all possible, let this come pass for me. But then he submits to the Father and says, not my will, but thine be done. So Jesus was tempted as we are, maybe even more so, because how strong would that temptation be? To have thrown in the towel to the devil when facing what he was about to face. It would be so easy for us to do that. But Jesus resisted that temptation so that he indeed could be our Savior. So he became flesh, and lived among us, dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. That is, we have viewed it, we've looked at it closely. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace. The word full means to be abundant or complete. So he is abundantly overflowing with grace and truth. The word grace is one of the central doctrines of the Christian faith. The word means, in this case, acceptance or a kindness granted. Through Jesus Christ, God accepts us, warts and all. 
Through Jesus Christ, God accepts us with all our failures, with all our sins, with all our failure to resist temptation. And out of his love, he accepts us. And he grants us that kindness of forgiveness, even though we do not deserve it. He gives us forgiveness and that gift of everlasting life. <coughs> that is why it is important for John to give us this theological explanation of the birth of Jesus. That we understand that he came and so that his Father could abundantly pour grace upon us through our faith in his Son, Jesus Christ, and give us the truth. The word truth here means unveiled reality. In other words, the reality of God had been behind the veil. The Jewish people only saw part of it. Just like Moses would have to wear a veil over his face after being with God, because the brightness of God shone off of him and it would blind him. But with Jesus, that veil is no longer there. This is why on that first Good Friday, the veil separating the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple was torn from top to bottom. That was showing that by Jesus' death upon the cross, there no longer needed to be a day of atonement. There no longer needed to be one day a year when the high priest would go into the Ark of the Covenant and sprinkle it with blood for the people of Israel, asking God to forgive them of all their sins for that past year. No, with Jesus Christ's death upon the cross, God now veil is ripped apart so we see God as this loving Father who sends His Son that we might be His own and live under Him in His kingdom. And so you may have come this morning expecting to hear again about shepherds and angels or maybe you're expecting to hear about wise men coming to the manger but instead we hear the theological impact and importance of the birth of the baby in Bethlehem. We do not dwell on the fact that there is no room in Eden, that the baby was put in a feeding trough, that the first visitors were the despised shepherds, but instead today we read of the glory of that baby, of how that baby was indeed God taking on in human flesh. As I mentioned in the newsletter, and I've mentioned from time to time before, Christmas in the ancient church was called the celebration or festival of the Incarnation. Incarnation, a fancy Greek word meaning God taking on human flesh. So St. John explains to us how God in Christ took on human flesh and indeed became the life and light of the world. So that we could see that pouring out of grace and the revealing of truth so that we can face each and every day in the confidence that we are forgiven, that salvation is ours, that the eternal kingdom awaits, and that we are indeed children of the Heavenly Father. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now sing, O come, O ye faith.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. <coughs> With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all of us in the and the we, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the Lord to come. Amen. Together in the joy of the promises fulfilled, let us bring our needs and our thanksgiving to God. Our response today is hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Holy Church throughout the world, that God will enable it to be the cradle of the world made flesh, God of grace and peace. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the nations of every continent, for those who serve in the government and the military, that God will lead them to strive for the well-being of all people, God of grace and peace. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are sick and recovering from illness, that they may know healing and that God's holy presence may be born throughout the compassion of those who care for them, God of grace and peace. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the children of the congregation, that God will have made them revealed to those who teach them and nurture them, God of grace and peace. Hear our prayer. Let us give thanks for those who have died in the faith, that we remain in fellowship with them forever as they join in the song of the angels, God of grace and peace. Hear our prayer. Hear all of our prayers, gracious God, and receive them in the name of the Word made flesh. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. This is the 25th of December, Christmas Day. Merry Christmas to you. St. John's is the corner of Wittenberg and Columbia. We celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas Eve service was last night. And it's Christmas Day service today. We're singing hymns. We're celebrating the incarnation, Jesus Christ, born of Virgin Mary. And he is with us forever. He is God made flesh, the incarnation, his birth, the nativity, the holy family, Joseph, Mary, Jesus, the Son of our God. We become one with him. He died for us to save us from our sins. He's with us. We will receive him today. 
we believe that Jesus is truly present in the body and blood, that they are given for us, that we may have eternal life. Listen to our Christmas hymns. We welcome you to come anytime. St. John's Lutheran Church, we usually have services at 8 o'clock in the morning on Sunday at 10.30, and Sunday school at 9.15. Merry Christmas to you. May God bless you. Let us pray, holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth the food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts to those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now for the feast of the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. St. John practices an open communion. Brothers are baptized and believe in Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. We believe his body and blood are truly present as we gather at his table in our communion age and our own individual congregation. We invite and encourage you to come forward with us this day as we gather at the table of the Lord. We continue our celebration with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Remembering therefore his salutary command, 
His life giving passion and death, His glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of His coming again. We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we, and all who share in the body and blood of Christ, may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory of your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. December the 25th, 2016, Christmas Day. We're celebrating the birth of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, the incarnation, Word made flesh, Christ who dwells among us. We receive him now in Holy Communion. We see the members of St. John's Church. We're receiving the Holy Communion, the true body and blood, receiving eternal life. As we become one with Jesus and one with one another, we love one another. Merry Christmas to you from St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio.
Christ with precious blood, strengthen, preserve him through faith unto life eternal. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you in his light and truth and love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We conclude our celebration with Simon. Thank you for watching our Christmas Day service on YouTube. We welcome you to come worship in, in person with us. We are happy that you're with us watching on your computer. And we hope that you received Christ virtually through Holy Communion. As we are assembled here and Jesus Christ is with us, and he is ready to be part of us. He has given his life for us. We received his body and blood. We're one with him. We're one with one another. We love one another. We praise his name, his incarnation. We hope that you will join us anytime. Pray for our ministry on YouTube. And we will pray for you. God bless you. Merry Christmas. We hope that Christ will be with you now and forever. And we will all be together in heaven. Receive eternal life together. Praise God. And Merry Christmas again to you.